Greetings. First of all, thanks to my brother-in-law, Sisi Burwa, his wife, Sitralaka Burwa, and Mr. Hartak Burwa and Ajit Talukdar for recording this. I want to tell you briefly about a true story, my story. It was published as a book in America titled One Long Journey. One Long Journey. It is a memoir. It is an orphan story that becomes an immigrant story ending with a personal triumph. It is a story of survival, a story of hope in the face of adversity. All proceeds from this book go for orphan welfare. The book is also available from Amazon worldwide. With that, I'll give you a summary of the story. I hope you like it. The book has received good editorial review comments as well as readers review comments. So, let me begin the story. There was once a boy growing up in a poverty-stricken family accepting everything at face value, including the relationship with the people around him. He had no clue that he was an orphan, that his biological parents had committed suicide by jumping from a small canoe in a mighty river called the Brahmaputra after drowning the older siblings. As I understand, abject poverty had driven the parents to take such extreme measure. The lonely canoe floated down the river. A boatman caught the little boat. To his utter surprise, he found an infant wrapped up in rags at the bed of the canoe. That baby was still alive, and that baby was me. Was me. Was me. Was me. I am named after that river, Lohit alias the Brahmaputra. I was raised by my poor maternal grandparents. They were and still are my parents. The biological parents had nothing to do with my survival and growing up. I grew up calling my grandparents I, meaning mother, and Baba, meaning father, and my uncles as my brothers. I grew up in a house with a leaky thatched roof full of people and witnessing ugliness of poverty. I grew up through myriads of sickness witnessing death after death. I saw beggars and lepers coming to our door for a little almsgiving but saw how mother never turned anyone away in spite of our own hardship. I had witnessed firsthand discrimination based on caste, color of skin, type of job one did, clothes she wore, untouchability, and women working like slaves with no voice. But who was I to question when adults accepted everything as normal in that societal environment? I was just a boy. Questioning elders would have been a sign of disobedience. So I survived. Slowly but surely, I got hints from outsiders that my parents were not my real parents. That made me angry, sad, a pessimist in spite of having a loving set of parents. My parents had kept the truth hidden with nothing but the best intention for me. Unfortunately, truth, pleasant or ugly, cannot be hidden forever. The society was making me weak. I had to get out of my little place. I had to get stronger. 
Along the way, unknowingly, I fell in love with a girl. I suppose I should not have, but hearts don't see the invisible walls. Eventually, I arrived in the city of Houston only with $7 in cash in my pocket and a small bank draft for the first semester's tuition with borrowed money from a few friends. I could not get a bank loan because I had no collateral to offer. In a strange land, I knew no Indian or Assamese person to lean on. Strange white men become friends, mentors, brothers and sisters. So I received helping hands from strangers. But adversity and death followed me here too. A doctor saved me once with a surgery. He did not even charge a poor student like me my share of the bill. I got married, not to my love, but to a stranger, because caste was a barrier they did not want to break. Soon after, my mother passed away. The message came as a telegram with a very few words. A poor student like me had no money to go back. In a freak accident, my mentor, a father figure, Dr. Randy Blumberg, left me too. I was on the verge of a total breakdown, but I survived. I feel like a cat with nine lives. Nothing could kill me. The adversities only made me stronger. I've been married to that stranger for 44 years. I love her very much. Someone had offered me a job after my graduation. I joined the oil and gas industry. We had two wonderful daughters. Sun was finally shining on me. I work for some of the best companies. As a globetrotter, I've seen the best and the worst. I picked up running at 40 and became an avid runner, including a few marathon runs. I've run by Salzach River in Salzburg, by the Charles River in Boston, by the Lake Michigan in Chicago. But I have also run through the slums of Luanda, Sao Paulo and Mumbai and so on. I've seen orphans and children playing by open raw sewage. Like me, many of you, have seen on TV a child come ashore dead. They're not as fortunate as I had been. They need a helping hand like I had received. So my purpose for this book is to help a few children. I'm telling you this personal story not to feel bad for me, but to make you aware that there are millions like me or even worse who need your help. This book is my humble effort to help such children. I pray that you would buy it, that you would tell about it to the world you know, urging them to buy, to help the helpless little people. Thank you.